7 to welcome Dan. This week, the Hubble telescope has hit a rather serious malfunction. One of its gyroscopes has stopped working, one of the components that is responsible for pointing the satellite in the direction that it needs to be pointed. The telescope is currently in safe mode, meaning that it won't be carrying out any scientific duties anytime soon. Hubble is a real asset to the astronomical community, and many scientists are very keen to get it back and fully functional as soon as possible, so fingers crossed they can do just that. Now for some news that I'm sure most of us have heard similar iterations of many times before. Scientists have said global warming is about to go too far. Scientists and government officials have met in South Korea and produced a dramatic and alarming report that the planet is not at all on track to keep the global temperature rise below 1.5 degrees C, which is seen as the cutoff temperature for global and environmental catastrophe. Apparently it would be a very expensive task to undertake, but a window of opportunity to save the planet remains open, for now. In other very related news, the Australian government has refused to phase out coal from its industry and its economy, despite warnings that it is crucial to do so in order to curb global warming by the UN. Now, we don't really get political and very much try to avoid any opinion on 7 Days of Science, which is why we feel it's extremely important to mention that coal is crucial to Australia's economy and industry. With coal being Australia's biggest export, and 60% of Australia's energy coming from coal. We're just trying to give both sides of the story, things are rarely as simple as they first seem, especially with the way it's presented in other media sources, which tends to neglect information. If any of you find that we've done so, please let us know and we'll try and fix it. Our job here on 7 Days of Science is to keep you informed, nothing more, unless there's an issue that we feel is absolutely essential that we give some sort of extra attention to. And in other news, Voyager 2 might just be about to leave our solar system. When it reaches the outer boundary of our heliosphere, called the heliopause, it will become the second man-made spacecraft to ever escape our solar system. The first, of course, being Voyager 1, which left the solar system in 2012. The way that the scientists know this is that when Voyager 2 travels around the boundary of our heliosphere, an increase in cosmic rays is detected, as was detected on Voyager 1 in May 2012. Very similar readings are coming through on Voyager 2 now, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's exiting the heliosphere just yet, it could be something else. To start off this week's paleontology news, the discovery of a new ancient flying squirrel has unravelled some mysteries about the origin of this group. It's pretty coincidental timing too, considering the video we made just last week. This 11.6 million year old fossil was initially thought to have been a primate, however as more of it was dug up it turned out to be a squirrel. The timing of the origin of flying squirrels has been debated in the past, with genetic studies indicating they split off 23 million years ago but other fossils pointing to this occurring 36 million years ago. Using both molecular and paleontological information to examine this new specimen, the researchers have found flying squirrels to have probably originated between 31 and 25 million years ago. Human evolution is pretty complicated business, and it looks like things have just got even more complex. 450,000 year old fossil teeth have been discovered in Italy, and they demonstrate morphological similarities with Neanderthals, whilst being clearly distinct from modern humans. This supports a relatively early divergence of the Neanderthal lineage from our ancestors, and also indicates that multiple human species may have been living in Italy at this time, suggesting a complex period of human evolution during the Middle Pleistocene. Talking about Neanderthals and complex human evolution, there's been another very cool study published in the last few days that's looked at some of the consequences of modern human Neanderthal interbreeding. We know this occurred at least twice in the last 100,000 years, and when it did, both species were likely exposed to new viruses from the other. However, the interbreeding also meant adaptations to cope with the viruses were passed between species, and it's been found that modern humans do indeed have genes from Neanderthals that have helped them adapt to deal with viruses. Additionally, Europeans greatly benefited from this interbreeding, since Neanderthals had already been in the area for a while before our species turned up, adapting to the viruses of the region and subsequently passing those genes to us. 
Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. As always, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already, and give us a like if you enjoyed the video, but we'll see you on Sunday.